Hi, everybody. So we are usually Sarah and Amaya, but today we are not Sarah and Amaya, not at least for the next 30 minutes, in case you didn't recognize us. Today we're going to be, she's going to be Joy. And if you already know her, you're going to know why. I'm going to be sadness for today because I'm going to tell you a very sad story. So we love this uh, movie and we're going to try to make our best today. So the sad story is that, and this is totally true, okay? This is not a fake thing or anything. Last summer, my laptop died. After five years of working together, it died. And the problem is not just that I needed to set up again a new laptop. And I'm sure that you already had this problem and suffered this pain, setting up a model environment or a uh, development environment in general. My problem was that since last summer, I had five different laptops, okay? Uh, including two changes of motherboards. So imagine my suffering and my pain during all those months. Even worse, one of them was a Windows environment. Have you ever tried to set up a development environment in a window? I, I did, or kind of. So uh, the good part of all this horrible life was that I have a great team, apart from Sarah. And they helped me a lot. Every time that I had a problem, they always helped me to make it better and survive. So I also get uh, an environment, and they are Ferran and Mikel. This is a weekend that we spent together and they were helping me to set up my environment. So imagine how great my team is. So my problem was, um, so today we're gonna learn everything that I learned and everything that they helped me, that we hope that it also helps you in the future or people that you know, uh, they don't like installing and setting environments, okay? So my first problem was that as I say, I needed to use a Windows environment, and I was not, I mean, I didn't have enough energy to set up a Windows environment to develop model at all. So then I went to, to Sarah, and I asked her for help because she's always so helpful with me. So, Sarah, can you explain what, how you helped me to help also them, please? Sure. What I did when Amaya asked me for help, was uh, to talk about Gitpod. Have you ever heard about Gitpod? Does anybody know about Gitpod? Raise your hand. Okay, last couple of hands. Uh, Gitpod is a free cloud-based uh, service. Uh, yeah, not sure if, okay. Uh, it's accessible from a browser. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but you are now, right now in a workshop, so you are going to work so to do some work, and you are going to need some browser. You can use your laptop, but you can also use your mobile phone. You only need a browser and an account, because you will need to log in in Gitpod using GitLab, GitHub, or Bitbucket, any of them. You will see that we have some practice exercises, and later you will need the browser and the uh, account in GitLab, GitHub, or Bitbucket. That's all. So you will see what you can do with this amazing service. The Gitpod is integrated with uh, different um, development environments like VS Code. Uh, and we are using this uh, Gitpod in other projects, like for instance, the Moodle developer documents. Uh, we, are, we have a Gitpod for uh, editing all the docs that we have, that so you don't need to install anything locally and you can use this Gitpod for Moodle development and you can uh, have them locally or you can edit or you can do whatever you want with them. And there are other uh, open source projects like Drupal or uh, WordPress that are also using uh, Gitpod for, in the, for them. So they, ha they can have this uh, easy uh, environment uh, created that you will see only needs to know how to click buttons. That's all. Uh, what we did was to combine Gitpod with Moodle Docker. We'll talk later about Moodle Docker. But uh, once we create a 
works workspace that it's it's what Hitpot calls the 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 spaces that they it, are created. What we are doing is to uh, clone our Moodle repository. So we have the Moodle repository, the code there, so we can also code use it for coding. Uh, we have uh, the Moodle database initialized. We have uh, the server app, and we have several uh, users and courses. You will see. You will know more about that later. So it's super easy. You just remember a browser, uh, accounts, and to know how to click things. That's all. Uh, we, when we were working on this integration with Moodle Docker and Gitpod, what we did was also create add some uh, em environment variables. You will understand later why these variables are for, but by default, when you uh, ex access, when you create a, a workspace in, in Gitpod, it's using the Moodle uh, GitHub uh, repository and the main branch. But you can, if you want, also use your own repository in GitHub or your uh, branch, any of your branches that you have. So you can use it for any test, any testing purposes, development, anything that you want. We will see later what is this data file uh, parameter for. Uh, you can also install Adminer. Adminer is a client that you can use for accessing to your database. So you have also access to your database. So apart from coding, you can also have access to your data. Uh, and you have you, the clone always to decide because by default it's kind of only cloning the, with the quickest way. But if you have, want to have the whole Git history, you can use this clone all parameter. We will see how these parameters work later. But here is the, you, you know that we can do several things with them. Uh, what are we using this tool? Uh, so apart from uh, having the uh, development environment in Windows, remember, in Windows, Amaya was able to have this environment. Uh, we are also using this uh, tool for easily testing uh, Moodle tracker issues. In fact, our teams in Moodle are using it for uh, the UX team or the some QA tests have been done using the, this tool because it's like it's super easy to create. You, it only takes like five minutes, and you can test any tracker in the in the tracker issue, and you can do whatever you want with this model instance. Uh, you can also, for instance, probably during this uh, mood, we are going to listen a lot of, we are going to hear a lot of uh, nice and amazing plugins that we are going to want to test. You can also use Gitpod, this Gitpod for testing all these amazing plugins that we are hearing here during these days. Uh, you can set up the development environment and you can run, it's like, it's a development environment, so you can also uh, run BHAT or PHP unit tests. So, yeah, amazing, right? See, remember, browser counts a click. That's all. So, let's start playing. So, uh, that's what we are going to do. You need to access to this page. The, there is a QR code there, or you can go to the Moodle Docker repository. I will, it's like I, I'm the, the, giving you some time to see this, but what we need to do is go to this page. I'll be back right now just for you to show you how it works, and then we'll be back here. So we open this page here. Can you see the open, not sure if it's, uh, can you see at the end of the room? It's okay? Okay, more or less, bigger? Can do it bigger. Uh, there is a button that says open it in Gitpod. So clicking this button will create a new workspace. If it's the first time that you access to Gitpod, you will need to log in using GitLab, GitHub, or Bitbucket. So you will need to register. This is not the first time that I'm accessing that. That's why the system is not asking me to log in. But if you, it's like it should be super easy and just one more step. Once you have logged in once, you don't need to log in again. As you can see, it's like I only need to click this and then I can uh, create the workspace. So I click the continue button and then magic starts. Remember the steps that we were mentioning before? Uh, what we are doing now, it's like this Gitpod is cloning the Moodle repository. It's uh, initializing the database. Uh, it's creating some user. In that case, it's only admin user. And uh, then we will have access to this Moodle site. It's a Moodle site that with, has, with a public URL. So anybody, it's like if it's uh, not near here, we can share this URL with these people and they can use it. 
uh, you need to know that it's a kind of a temporary site. So it's only if you're not using it, it it's uh, automatically closed in 15 minutes. If you are using it, it's still open. And after 14 days, uh, it's removed. So if, if you're using these sites every day, it's okay. If you don't use it, them for, for 14 days, they are automatically removed. So I can see it kind of a sandbox or testing purposes or for uh, development in, in, if you need them or things like that. So here, as you can see, we are uh, Docker. It is like Docker is doing their stuff. We need say that's in the web server. At any point, we will start, the, the containers are, yeah, created, started, so yeah, most. Not sure about the Wi-Fi here, but yeah, let's see, because we need connection. Yeah, I forgot that one. And now, as you can see, we have the setting up database. So yeah, database is being initialized. Remember, I have only done one click, eh? I, I'm not doing anything, it's doing the stuff. And once it finishes, uh, we will see the Moodle site. I'm going to share again the other slide for you to see. In the meanwhile, it will be doing the, the magic. Uh, everybody's here. Are you following me? Have you ever, ever been able to click the continue button? Wow, we have experts here, Mama. Yeah. Sorry, sadness. We have, wow, we knew. In case anybody needs help, just tell us, okay? And we can try to help you. In fact, I initialized some space before, so maybe, yeah. It usually takes like five minutes. This is a different one. It's like, yeah, I know that I'm kind of cheating, but I wanted to take advantage of all the time because I, we, know, we know that we will run out of time, but yeah. As you can see, everything has been installed, the database, uh, the, the, now, and now we have a Moodle uh, site. The, the user is, for accessing to this site is admin, the password is test, easy, always this one. Any git pod that you initialize is always admin user test password. So I'm going to show you how I can log in using the admin and test password. And now I have a Moodle instance where I can do whatever I want. You can see that it's an empty, it's true, I don't have any course here, it's totally empty. Uh, in the left hand, you can see all the code, so if I can come here, probably, sorry, you are not going to see this, but you, you will see in your laptops uh, at the end of the room. Uh, we have the Moodle folder with all the Moodle code here, so we can do whatever we want with our Moodle. We can uh, start uh, developing nice plugins, or we can change whatever we want to change, or we, anything. It's here and we can automatically, anything, any file that we edit here will be automatically uh, uh, changed and we, we, when we reload the page, we will see it. Amazing, right? Yeah, so helpful, so useful. Thank you, Sarah, thanks a lot. But you know, I have more problems as usual. So every time that I run it, I need to create courses and users and activities, you know how, Painful is that? I know it. And I knew that you were going to say that. So what we have done is to use, to integrate Gitpod with these testing scenarios, the, the, the testing generators, uh, with the, these generators that were, uh, are available from Moodle 4.4. You can uh, load la that data using uh, Behat generators. So if you create a file, a feature file with these Behat generators. If you don't know anything about Behat generators, you need to come tomorrow for the day jam because then it's going to explain them if you want, sure, as always. But yeah, just for you to know. So using Behat generators, uh, it's going, you can create as many uses, courses, batches, uh, anything that supports generators, including them in a, in a feature file, you are going to be able to load in your Moodle site. So you don't need to uh, done manually, and instead of that, you can go by web interface or by CLI and then upload the feature file. Sorry. <coughs> you can dance. I can't, I don't know how. Uh, yes. The data file <coughs> parameter, but that we seen before, that she said we're gonna talk about this later on, is, is this file. So we already have a file to create your own users, courses, activities, whatever, you can pass as a data file parameter to the Docker command, 
and it will run up with everything inside in the database. So it's very good. Actually, it's very exactly. good. Exactly. So let's play with this part. Remember, we have now a Git pod, but it was completely empty. When I access to the Git pod, is this one? It's completely empty. I don't have any course here. It's, yeah, completely empty. I come home, no, no users, only admin user, no courses. So what, what we can do is to create, or in, a, in that case, it's like just for being quick, because we have a lot of many things to explain and yeah, we want to focus on one thing. Uh, in the URL that you can see here, this tiny URL, the Moodle Gitpod future uh, URL, you can download a future file with some generators. Uh, let me go to the raw version for you to show how it is. It's generators. So anybody familiarized with the Behat generators, as you can see, it's like we have uh, courses uh, uh, with the following courses exist and we have the full name, short name. The, uh, uh, there are another course here. So we are going to create two, two different courses. We have, we are going to create two different users, teacher, uh, five users, uh, students. So it's like reading this file, it's super easy and it's using generators. So anybody can create these files. Uh, so let me, Download this file. Okay, I think I'm going to download here. Okay, and if I go back to the uh, uh, Gitpod, there are two different ways of doing this, but I'm going to use command line. You know, it's, I prefer command line. So yeah, uh, this is the command. Uh, yeah, probably at the end of the room. My apologies because you're not going to read this. So yeah, we will share the presentation with you later. So I have a terminal here, so I can run this command. Okay, let me allow this. It's just a command for using Moodle Docker, and we are passing this feature file here. But before that, sorry, I need to upload the file, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, let me upload. And yeah, this one. So now we have the file here in our kitpot, and I can run this command here, okay. It's initializing the behead part and, okay, why it's not found? I'm not reading anything with these glasses. Oh, maybe it's not the name? Ah, no, yeah, right, it's not, the, the name is not okay, so let me change the name. See, it's working when, it, when you are doing Things that it's not, uh, okay, rename here, and we can call it uh, basic scenario. Okay, I remove this one. Okay, so now if I run again this with the right name for the uh, feature file, as you has, uh, probably you haven't seen that, but yeah, not sure if I can, this, this is, ah, okay, yeah, this is also working here. It's great because, yeah, but uh, you can see that, uh, 19 steps have been executed successfully. So if I reload, if I go back to my course in the system browser, I come here, I reload the page, and I hide this. I can see that in my courses, I have now two courses. See, it's just ma magic. Uh, and if I access to any of these courses, I can see they have a, a lot of activities, and probably there are uh, several uh, students enrolled. So, that's why we were asking, right, Amaya? Yeah, but that's not bad. But I still have, I mean, this is okay for some things, but you know that we are requested to, uh, to test everything in different PHP versions, different databases. It's not just put it there and, whoa, it will work. No, it's not that easy, Sarah. Okay, she, she's never, yeah, she never has enough. But no worries, Amaya. Because remember, Gitpod is integrated with our Moodle Docker. So uh, Moodle Docker is supporting different databases or different PHP unit versions. For now, the Gitpod integration is not supporting this. You will see at the end of the presentation that there are still some limitations, but we can take advantage of some of the features that we have with Moodle Docker. Uh, for instance, we can send emails because Moodle Docker includes MailPit, so we access to this uh, a, a slash underscore slash mail URL, and we will see the email. So let me go back to the Gitpod 
instance. Uh, let me open it in a different browser. It's like this is a public URL that it's inside the browser, and if I open it in a new tab, you can see it's like the 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 code has disappeared. But now I have my my Moodle site here. So uh, if I access to instead of my I put the uh, remember uh, dash underscore slash mail. I should be able to say to see mail pit and all the mails that have been sent during uh, this, this session. For instance, we have created a couple of uh, courses, and this is the welcome messages that we are receiving. Uh, if instead of that, uh, for instance, I access to, I s try to send a message. Let's do something. I can send a message to any of the students. Uh, this one, the, my favorite one, student one. I can say hola, and. If I go to the mail pit, I should see that I have a, one more new message which says, hola. So if you have something to test that needs uh, email, you can also use Gitpod for these purposes. Easy, right? But there are more things that we can do with Gitpod. We can also uh, run, as I mentioned before, PHP units or BHATs. Uh, the only thing that we need to do this for this uh, is to initialize the PHP or the BHAT environment and then run these tests. I'm going to leave them executing. Not sure if we, we will have enough time for them, but yeah, let's try it. And in the meanwhile, we can continue talking. But yeah, I open the terminal, go to the terminal, and copy this uh, the, the script, and then I'm initializing. In that case, I choose PHP unit, but we had this exactly the same, as you can see in the next slide. Uh, let's see if we have enough time for, for yeah, showing you how it works. I don't think so. OK. Do you know? Maybe we have time. Or maybe <laughs> so, not. Yeah, we have it's exactly the same. You are going to have the presentation, so you can follow all these steps. And yeah. Yeah, that, that's great. That that way I can maybe work on even nice. in Windows, but I won't be able to remember all the parameters or the things. You explain lots of things. I won't be able to remember that, Sarah, for sure. Okay, no worries, because we have one more thing just left. No, no, no worries, because it's all, just one more. We have integrated, uh, we have pre pre prepared a tan per monkey script and integrated it with Tracker, not sure if you know that Tracker is a system that we use to manage our issues for bugs, improvements, uh, pull re uh, f feature requests. It's based on of Jira, in Atlassian Jira, and anybody can report any issue there. And what we have done is to uh, integrate Tamper Monkey, which is a browser extension to run ja JavaScript to enhance, enhance web pages. And using this, we can see a button below uh, each branch that we can use to open this branch. So let's see how it works. I'm going to start. I need some water. <coughs> Maybe I can do the click. Are you brave enough to do the click? No, no, no. Okay. No, I'm not <laughs> so if you want to use this for your, uh, you have to have this uh, Tamper Monkey extension. You need to install Tamper Monkey extension in your favorite browser, for instance, Firefox or Chrome. You can install the Gitpod script. You have here the URL. Uh, you can visit any Moodle tracker issue, and then you will see that there is a G opening Gitpod button uh, below each branch. I can show you that if I access to any issue, this is one of the issues that I have open. Here, above the branch, I can see this open in Gitpod. If you access to the tracker, I'm sure if people familiarized with this won't see this button. And that's the thing that you don't need, that way you don't need to remember all the parameters that I mentioned at the beginning of the session. And it's easy because you can open this specific branch uh, for this specific repository uh, in Gitpod. So you can test what this tracker issue is doing, what this code is doing. Easy, right? Thank you, Sarah. I think I won't be able to, to work this way. Thank you very much. For your help. I almost have it. Thank you. So now I guess that now you understand how painful it was my process. And that now, now that you have all, all this information, 
Um, there are some ideas that we can work on to improve or, or enhance the, the Gitpod pro project that Sara, Sara implemented. So the first thing that uh, we want to do is to rename the Gitpod workspaces for an easier uh, identification because all of them uh, are named exactly the same and in a <laughs> difficult way to, to identify. So that's one of the things. Uh, we want also to add support to new parameters. Remember that with the Tupper package, you don't need to remember all the parameters, but to have the option to, to. And please, if you have any idea, if you can think about a um, different use case or different situation or different ideas to implement, let us know. We will be, she will be happy to implement. I will be to implement them. Um, and that's it. Uh, as, I, as Sarah said, this is not only for technical people. We use also for non-technical people, as UX designer or PX researcher and things like that. They can see the code, uh, the patches in the tracker before being integrated. So they can they can check the strings, the the, the UI, the colors, whatever we want to check, and they can use it. So spread the word. And thanks for joining us. One more thing. If you want to, to learn more about the non-technical part, Sarah and Julia had uh, also a presentation on Thursday uh, too that is going to be very interesting as well. Julia is uh, one of our content designers, and they're going to do, um, they're going to explain the Gitpod, but from a different side of point of view. So thank you. Any question? She will be happy. We will. She will be happy to answer any question. She will be happy. She's always happy. So that's going to be easy. That's it. Okay. okay. Thank you very much.